going to read a poem that I actually read here, uh, I think, around four months ago. And I've just ch uh, changed the title. The title used to be Mother is Turning 90. Now the title is Mother Has Turned 90. <laughs> Same poem. <laughs> Mother has turned 90. What a gift to have her here. Although she's somewhat hindered, she still is very dear. She's mostly in the moment and content with very little. But no matter how many visitors, she still loves being right in the middle. Although a pretty new scarf delights her to no end, she only keeps it for a moment and then passes it to a friend. Her presence is a reminder we only have this day. Enjoy what is and then let go of whatever comes our way. Thank you. Uncle Rat went out to ride, Kitty alone, Kitty alone. Uncle Rat went out to ride, Kitty alone and I. Uncle Rat went out to ride, sword and buckler by his side. Macax, Macari, Tuck, Nadil, Kitty alone and I. Lady Mouse will marry me, Kitty alone, Kitty alone. Lady Mouse will marry me, Kitty alone and I. Lady Mouse will marry me. Ask me Uncle Ratsashi, Macax, Macari, Duck, Nadil, Kitty alone and I. Uncle Rat, will you marry Lady Mouse? Kitty alone, Kitty alone. Uncle Rat, will you marry Lady Mouse? Kitty alone and I. Uncle Rat, will you marry Lady Mouse? Yes, kind sir, and half me house. My cax, my carry, duck and a deal. Kitty alone and I. Lady Mouse, where will the wedding be? Kitty alone, Kitty alone. Lady Mouse, where will the wedding be? Kitty alone and I. Lady Mouse, where will the wedding be? Ask me Uncle Rat, so she macaques my carry, talk in the deal, kitty alone and I. Uncle Rat, where will the wedding be? Kitty alone, Kitty alone. Uncle Rat, where will the wedding be? Kitty alone and I. Uncle Rat, where will the wedding be? Up at the top of a holly tree. My tax, my carry, talk in the deal. Kitty alone and I. This is called Spring's Attack. Don't show me squirrels' nests like weathered skulls carved on branches holding fecundity. Don't show me battalions of crows buried by gold that once perched on the scrawny shoulders of trees. Why must your command post be a racket of caw and song bursting with light through my open door? Half-closed, fluttering side views and mirrors, your voice hums yellow and wet promises. Silked in dissipation, you unmask winter's quiet then swallow his glaze as hastily as bows are pulled from wedding gifts or money wired in foreign currency. Every year you bury the damage without thought. 
Every year you authorize the crocus to unwrap herself at night. For what? To mock me? I'm unnerved enough. My keys lost under the passenger seat, driver's license out of date, passport living another life. But I'm still surprised when dandelions blink, when Earth's eye lashes open for one more confrontation. Under the umbrella cloud of pollen flourish and insect glisten, your involuntary coalition. Your forces advance, armored in placenta and potent green. Why must love, war, miracles happen so fast? After the siege, will I inspect the virgin, the wounded, the dead, and renew my faith once again in the buried seed? Sign your name, Faithless. I was a teenager when I became aware of how much I enjoyed the idea of wandering. I was really into pop music. Are you really out there with these lights? I, I'll assume you are. Um, all the popular songs, or almost all of them, were about what was um, naively called love in those days, hold my hand and can I be your, your guy and things like that. But every now and again would come along uh, a song like uh, Stowaway or The Happy Wanderer. And I realized pretty early that the theme of my life was wandering. And uh, later on when I became uh, aware of archetypes, I realized my archetype was Hermes, the guy with the winged sandals and the winged hat and so on. So here's a poem about wandering that's particularly close to my heart. There was a merry passenger, a messenger, a mariner. He built a gilded gondola to wander in and had in her a load of yellow oranges and porridge for his provender. He perfumed her with marjoram and cardamom and lavender. He called the winds of Argosies with cargoes in to carry him across the rivers seventeen that lay between to tarry him. He landed all in loneliness where stonily the pebbles on the running river Derelin go merrily forever on. He journeyed then through meadowlands to shadowland that dreary lay, and under hill and over hill went roving still a weary way. He sat and sang a melody, his errantry a tarrying. He begged a pretty butterfly that fluttered by to marry him. She scorned him and she scoffed at him. She laughed at him unpitying. So long he studied wizardry and sigildry and smithying. He wove a tissue, airy thin, to snare her in, to follow her. He made him beetle leather wing, a feather wing to swallow her. He caught her in bewilderment with filament of spider thread. He made her soft pavilions of lilies and a bridal bed, of flowers and of thistle down, to nestle down and rest her in. And silken webs of filmy white and silver light he dressed her in. He threaded gems and necklaces, but recklessly she squandered them and fell to bitter quarreling. Then sorrowing, he wandered on, and there he left her withering. As shivering, he fled away. With windy weather following, on swallowing, he sped away. He battled with the Dumbledores, the Hummerhorns, and honeybees, and won the golden honeycomb, honeycomb, and running home on sunny seas, in ship of leaves and gossamer, with blossom for a canopy. He sat and sang and furnished, furbished up and burnished up his panoply. He tarried for a little while in little isles that lonely lay, and found there naught but blowing grass. And so at last the only way he took and turned, and coming home with honeycomb, to memory his message came, and errand too. In daring do and glamoury he had forgot them, journeying and turning a wanderer. So now he must depart again and start again his gondola, forever still a messenger, a passenger, a tarrier, a roving as a feather does, a weather-driven mariner. Thank you. 
Um, I would like to dedicate the poem I'm going to read this morning to uh, Mildred Avino. She uh, was an amazing woman that I was blessed to uh, know. And earlier this month, she passed away at the age of 95. It's called The Gift. The gift of life is given. It's all part of the plan. We leave our home in heaven, returning to earth once again. A gift is not a present. A gift comes from the heart. No money need be spent to tell them both apart. You bring your gifts with you when you come to stay a while. Now with them what to do, the knowing will bring smiles. To all with whom you share, your family, friends, and strangers, use them with care, not sharing is the danger. For God gave these gifts of forgiveness, compassion, and love to his son to share with us while sending grace from above. That he would pass along these gifts to all mankind. But where did we go wrong? When did we become blind? To the gifts we have been given on the day that we arrived. So the life we should be living is much more than to survive. Use the gifts on each other. Extend your heart and hand. Help your sister and brother. Take the time to understand. The importance of each for all of your life. Good examples will teach until comes the time. The gift of life is taken. It's all part of the plan. We go back home to heaven, leaving earth once again. It's called, I'll Always Be Your Mother. <clears throat> When I held you as a baby Tucked you close to my breast I could hear your gentle breathing As you laid your head to rest So contented as you closed your eyes Your tiny face in sweet release wanted to protect you, give you a life of joy and peace. I'll always be your mother, you're forever in my heart, and I will always be here for you, even when we are apart. your wings were growing and you were learning to be you what adventures you were having as you sailed into the blue sometimes your flights were bumpy you'd show me bruises or a tear still you knew that I would help you I'd take away your fear I'll always be your mother and you're forever in my heart and I will always be here for you even when we are apart When harder times would come your way You struggled with your pain But I would always try to help you Get you flying again You're grown and on your own And I'm so very proud of you all you are doing with your life I'm so very proud of you Now I see you in a quandary I have no answer to give 
It's your journey, you must take it. And I can't tell you how to live. Though I know you want an answer, it's tearing you apart. Love and support I'll always give you. Find the answer in your heart. I'll always be your mother. You're forever in my heart. And I will always be here for you. Even when we are apart. Even when we are apart. Even when we are apart. Uh, this is called Reimagine. Reimagine earth and heaven. Easy if you try. Hell is not below us. Heaven is not in. The sky. No, they both swarm all around us, and our dreaming days are through, and our senses thrill to wakefulness in this world of me and you. But we must let go of something Before we can begin No, there will be losses Even as we find and win We are always in the making And this world is always strange we must guard against all choices that undermine the drive to change. Embrace the discomfort that unsettles understanding. Acknowledge those condemned to non-existence. There is no way of knowing which voices to respond to or which to leave unanswered. So we trust in one another. What we both can share, give. Stand up to privations that confine the way we live. We are, we attune our life to promise and what nature has bestowed. And if free means anything at all, one cannot be free. Gonna, uh, I'd like to dedicate this song to Junko and to Ellen Schmidt for um, all their work and efforts in raising money for Japan and the rest of the community who has come out to help raise money for those relief efforts. This is called With a Little More Heart. Good hard look at what's going down. And where the heart 
times I've fallen all too high Just look into the eyes of another soul Is there a way to bring some comfort there And be the one to bring that person home If I could hold them in my arms If I could take away the harm If I could make their world just a little Just a little more bright Day by day by day With a little more heart We can learn to love a little more With a little more hope We can learn to believe again With a little more trust We can try to find a better way With a little more With a little more I'm Dr. Kathy Phillips. And I'm Dr. Andrew Blum. Epilepsy is the third most common neurological disorder in the United States after Alzheimer's disease and stroke. It affects more than 3 million people with 200,000 new cases diagnosed each year. The condition is caused by a temporary disturbance in brain function resulting in various kinds of seizures. 
These seizures can produce involuntary movements, changes in awareness, altered behavior, or loss of consciousness. Epilepsy is a major chronic medical condition and can affect a person's quality of life similar to arthritis, heart disease, diabetes, or cancer. It can limit activity and cause pain, anxiety, or depression. It can also be life-threatening. Because epilepsy can also present non-medical challenges such as discrimination and social stigma, we urge you to learn more about this condition. To find out more about this disorder, including its symptoms, diagnosis, and treatment, visit epilepsyfoundation.org. Whether it's infectious disease, severe weather, or a chemical spill, emergencies that threaten our public health can happen at any time. After the events of 9-11, the federal government established the Medical Reserve Corps to respond to emergencies. Today in the Commonwealth, 45 Corps units recruit and train both medical and non-medical volunteers. In addition, the Department of Public Health's MSAR program, or Massachusetts System for Advanced Registration, credentials and deploys healthcare professionals to respond in such emergencies. Now a new effort is underway to enhance emergency response by aligning the activities of both groups. Mass Response is designed to facilitate emergency medical response and promote local partnerships in planning and assistance. And you, health professionals and concerned citizens alike, can be part of this important effort. For more information on Mass Response and how to get involved, visit maresponse.org.